Hi, this is Kristen, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the OER text, Chapter 4, Sections 4.1, which basically talk, talks about the main types of tissues in the body, or the principal tissues. So it's particularly important that you be able to identify the four primary or principal tissue types, and then discuss the basic structure and function of each. Also, we'll talk a little bit about the embryonic origin of tissues. So after um, a sperm and an egg share their genetic material, during the first eight weeks of development, the developing offspring, also known as a conceptus, is referred to as an embryo. Um, after the end of the eighth week until birth, the developing offspring or conceptus is referred to as a fetus. So we're going to talk a little bit about the embryonic origin of tissue, which is during the first eight weeks of development. Then we will uh, discuss different types of tissue membranes and some of the qualities of each of them. So first of all, this really should be a uh, review for you, but a tissue is just a group of cells that are similar in structure and perform a specific function. So the key point here is that tissues are made up of different types of cells, not all, not all the same type of cell. Now histology is the study that involves the microscopic examination of tissue structure. So the appearance of the tissue, the organization, as well as the function. So basically histology is the study of the tissues. The four principal or primary tissue types are shown in the image here, and I'm going to make it a little bigger. Um, nervous tissue is one. It includes the brain, spinal cord, and the nerves. Epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are those that create the skin surface and also line the, the GI or gastrointestinal tract organs. And the epithelial tissue lines other hollow organs. It also even makes glands. The third type of tissue is muscle tissue and there are basically three types of muscle tissue. Those are cardiac, smooth, and skeletal muscle. And also connective tissue. Connective tissue includes bone, tendon, fat, and other soft padding tissue. And that's just naming a few. So there are many different types of epithelial tissues that are classified according to the number of layers and the shapes of the cells. And there are two different types of nervous tissue, nerves, and supporting cells of nerves called neuroglia. And there are three types of muscle tissue and there are several types of connective tissues. Now in class, I in class I made the point of showing you a one page summary sheet of tissues. It showed the four principal tissues in bold and then the subclassifications of those tissues were indented and I strongly encourage you to keep that in your notebook and refer to it um, when needed. Okay, so as we move on here, connective tissue is particularly known for binding the cells and organs together, and muscle tissue, muscle tissue is known because it has the quality such that it contracts forcefully when it's excited by an electrochemical disturbance and it ultimately causes movement. So nerves excite, mu excite muscles. And then there are cardiac, skeletal, and smooth muscle. Cardiac muscles found only in the heart. Skeletal muscles are what allow us to move our body and they're the most abundant um, compared to the heart. And then there's smooth muscle, which is found in hollow organs, and, uh, such as the blood vessels. And nervous tissue is an excitable tissue because it is excited by an electrochemical disturbance. 
and it allows for the generation and propagation of electrochemical signals in the form of nerve impulses. And the nerve impulses allow communication between different parts of the body, and the communication is very fast. Epithelial tissue is a group of cells that cover exterior surface of, surfaces of the body. It, it lines internal cavities and passageways, and it forms certain glands. Examples would be the skin surface, such as the epidermis, the lining of the gastrointestinal tract, and other hollow organs. So, basically, I wanted to talk a little bit about the embryonic origin of tissues and some of the major organs. There are three primary germination layers in an embryo. So this is during the first eight weeks of development of a human. The ectoderm is one. The mesoderm is another. And the endoderm is the next. The Cells making up a tissue are going to share a common embryonic origin. So a zygote, a zygote is basically a fertilized egg, and it's made up of a single cell formed from the fusion of the genetic components of the sperm from the male and the egg from the female. Eventually, the zygote will divide and develop into an embryo. And an embryo is the term that we use to describe the conceptus, or offspring, from the time of conception through week eight. A fetus is the term used to describe the offspring from week nine through birth. The, the first embryonic cells are omni, omnipotent. And what that means is that they're stem cells. Omnipotent stem cells have the ability to become any type of cell in the body of the new organism. These cells can divide, differentiate, and develop into any type of cell. As the cells develop, three major cell lines are formed within the embryo. And these are the three primary germ layers or germination layers. Each germ layer is named by its relative position. So, ecto means outer. An example would be nervous tissue derives mainly from ectoderm and epithelial tissue derives from an ectoderm. Meso means middle. And an example of mesoderm would be muscle tissue. Muscle tissue derives from mesoderm. So it starts off as mesoderm and then it eventually develops into muscle tissue. Um, epithelial tissue also derives from mesoderm. So as you've noticed, as you're going to notice, epithelial tissue actually derives from endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm, whereas muscle comes solely from mesoderm and nervous tissue comes from ectoderm. Now the term endo means inner, and the tissues or organs that derive from endoderm include the thymus gland, which is in the neck, the thyroid gland, and the parathyroid gland. There are others as well. And tissue membranes can be divided into two major classes. There are two broad categories of tissue membranes in the body. One are connected tissue membranes, and that includes the synovial membrane. One moment here.
I don't know what's wrong with my pen. I must have done something wrong here. Um, the synovial membranes are a type of connective tissue membrane. Now, the other major type of tissue membrane would be an epithelial membrane, and that includes the mucous membrane, the serous membranes, and the cutaneous membranes. In other words, the skin. So, um, so a thin sheet of cells that either covers the outside of the body, such as the skin, lines an internal body cavity, such as the peritoneal cavity, or lines a tube or conduit like a blood vessel, or lines a movable joint cavity like a synovial joint, any thin sheet of cells that does any of those things is a tissue membrane. And the two basic tissue membrane types, which would be epithelial and connected, are recognized based on the primary tissue type that makes up each one. So in other words, epithelial membranes are primarily made of epithelial tissue, and connective tissue membranes are primarily made up of connective tissue. Epithelial membranes are made up of epithelial tissue that is glued by a basement membrane to an underlying layer of supportive connective tissue. And so it's important to recognize that all epithelial tissue has a supportive connective tissue deep to it. Okay. So Epithelial membranes, one of them, one example, would be a mucous membrane, also referred to as a mucosa. A mucous membrane is anything that's any moist membrane that lines cavities that are open to the outside environment. They're moist because they're coated with the secretions of mucus glands that secrete mucus. Um, so mucous membranes would be in the mouth and the nose because they're exposed to the outside environment. They could be at the anus or the urethra or the vagina, any part of the body that opens up to the outside environment that's also moist. Other examples, well, mucous membranes line the respiratory tract, they line the digestive tract, the urinary tract, and the reproductive tracts. Now, there is an underlying connective tissue that helps support these epithelial tissue layers because remember, a mucous membrane is just a type of epithelial membrane. And the lamina propria is the underlying connective tissue that helps support the epithelial tissue layers. So, The hmm, sorry, I don't know what the problem is. Well, you can see here on the bottom of this picture is the lamina propria. That is the connective tissue. Um, it is deep to the basement membrane in mucous membranes. So you'll notice that. The epithelium is basically shown to sit above the basement membrane. Wherever you see the one, two, three, and four, that refers to the epithelial tissue. The basement membrane is deep to that, and then the lamina propria, that supportive connective tissue, is actually deep to the basement membrane. So mucous membranes, um, basically consist of these three layers, the epithelium, then the lamina propria, which is usually made up of a loose areolar connective tissue, so one that it's not very dense, it's got a lot of space in it. And then usually under the lamina propria, there's a third layer in mucous membranes 
and it's a smooth muscle layer called the muscularis mucosi. Um, the major functions of mucous membranes, like the uh, ones that line the digestive and respiratory tract, is that they can be absorptive, so they can absorb uh, oxygen or they can absorb nutrients. Um, they can be secretory, which means they secrete they secrete mucus, and they have a protective function. Um, they're moist because they're covered with mucus. Okay, so as we look down here, here, here we can see a picture of a mucous membrane. At the very top of the picture, you'll see this mucus coat. That's, that's that moist mucus layer. That includes all the secretions. And then the epithelium is basically shown um, with these layer of cells, and then they have that kind of purple nucleus in the middle of it. Um, there is a sort of mustard colored, there is a mustard colored uh, layer, That's the, that would be considered the basement membrane that sits below the layer of cells. And then in the center, if you look just above the basement membrane, there is this goblet cell. The goblet cell, the goblet cell is responsible for secreting the mucus. And you can see this is the basement layer here, and this here, this is the goblet cell. Now, below this basement membrane, you can find the lamina propria. And the lamina propria basically runs from here to here. This is the lamina propria. It's loose connective tissue, and then you can see the muscularis layer beneath that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about serous membranes. Okay, here's another picture of the mucous membrane. It exact, shows the exact same thing. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about serous membranes. Now, we've discussed this before in Chapter 1. Serous membranes are moist membranes that line the body cavities that are closed to the exterior of the body, such as the pericardial cavity, which holds the heart, the pleural cavities, which hold the lungs, and the peritoneal cavity, which holds the abdominal pelvic organs. So they're moist, just like the mucous membranes, but instead of being in membranes open to the outside environment, they are in membranes that are closed to the outside of the body. And serous membranes secrete a thin watery fluid that lubricates organs when they rub against one another. and or when they rub against the walls of cavities. So if we didn't have the serous membrane or the serous fluid, it would be really painful to breathe or to, or to move. And it would cause inflammation of the tissues. Uh, the serous membrane is a thin, continuous sheet that covers two different surfaces. Remember, it's a, a double-layered membrane. It's one that folds over on itself. And the parietal membrane is the portion that lines the wall of the cavity, like wallpaper. And the visceral membrane covers the surface of the viscera, or the organs. Okay. And in the earlier picture, we could see that the serous membrane, this double-layered structure resembles the wall of a water-filled balloon with a fist that's thrust into it. So, serous membranes, these internal membranes, are sometimes called a serosa or serosi for plural. Uh, there's a simple squamous epithelium over areolar tissue that produce the serous fluid. The serous fluid arises from the blood and it covers organs and lines the wall of body cavities. Um, in the case of the heart, endothelium lines the blood vessels in the heart, 
And mesothelium lines body cavities like the pericardium, the peritoneum, and the pleura that hold the lungs. Okay. There's one more membrane, and this is the cutaneous membrane. So far, we've talked about um, just epithelial membranes. We mentioned the mucous membrane and the serous membrane, and the third kind of epithelial membrane is the cutaneous membrane. Now, this is different than the other two because it's dry and it's not moist. And the cutaneous membrane refers to the skin. The skin is made up of stratified, keratinized squamous epithelium. At least that's what makes up the outer layer of the skin called the epidermis. So it's many layers because it's stratified. The apical cells are squamous shaped, so they're kind of flat and squatty. And the skin's unique because it's keratinized. It has this protein called keratin, which makes it thick and waterproof, and it makes it quite tough. The major function of the cutaneous membrane, or the skin, is that it, pr it protects the body in many ways. It's a pretty dry layer, except for when you perspire, and uh, it protects, it keeps water from exiting your body, or it keeps our body from soaking up water like a sponge. It also keeps pathogens or disease-causing agents out. And it protects us from ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Okay, so we've talked about three epithelial membranes, mucus, serous, and cutaneous. And there's one type of connective tissue membrane called the synovial membrane. The synovial membrane lines joint cavities, and it produces this lubricating fluid within the joint. It... Uh, it's made up of connective tissue, and the connective tissue secretes this really slippery synovial fluid, which keeps our joints lubricated, kind of like how the Tin Man lubricates his, his joints with oil. So the cells that form this, this synovial membrane are basically connective tissue cells. Okay, so that... That basically finishes up our little, my little talk on section 4.1, and so I'm going to stop now. Uh, but before I do, let me just do a quick recap so you can kind of see the big picture. We defined tissue and histology. We talked about, we mentioned the four primary tissue types in the body and their, and their functions. Connective tissue, for example, binding cells and organs together. Epithelial tissue, covering body surfaces, lining cavities, and forming glands. Um, we talked about the three primary germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And we talked about tissue membranes and how there are epithelial membranes and connective tissue membranes. Basically, three types of epithelial membranes, mucous membranes, serous membranes, and the cutaneous membrane. And then there's one type of connective tissue membrane called the synovial membrane. Okay, now I'm going to stop.